Sporting Journal Radio, presented by Onyx. All right, now we're going to talk to Joe Henry from Lake of the Woods Tourism to find out what's going on up at uh, Lake of the Woods. Joe, how you doing? Hey, Brett. I tell you what, ice fishing's going on. I mean, uh, we're uh, we're holding ice, man. It's uh, you know we're getting uh, you know we we got we don't have like bone chilling temps. We don't have twenty below or anything, but I mean we got single digits during the you know during the evenings and and we're going into the teens during the day. I'm looking at the week ahead and. And we got we got great weather for ice fishing. And I'll tell you what, if you want to get your last weeks of ice fishing in, we got resorts with uh, houses out on the lake, whether it's a sleeper house or day house, we got availability. Uh, I tell you, the pike anglers have been uh, you know uh, doing really well the last you know few weeks actually. And so pike fishing's on right now. If you want to bring your own equipment up, or maybe you want to rent a you know a house uh, at a resort and do the pike fishing. You know, a lot of our resorts will actually, if you talk to them, they'll place a, a fish house. You can stay nice and warm and watch flags out the window in some very, very good pike areas uh, in that shallower water. So it's, you know, mar- fish houses can be overnight on the ice on Lake of the Woods through March 31st as we're border water. Our walleye and, and sauger season goes through April 14th. Pike season never closes. And of course, Brett, you can keep your perch, you can keep your eel pout, tulabies, things like that too. Yeah, and uh, you know, you talk about the extended ice fishing season up there, and this year I think you're really getting your money's worth. I, I'd imagine there's really, I mean, it's no different than it probably was a couple of weeks ago up there. Lots of ice and uh, probably still a fair amount of snow up there too. Oh yeah, it's uh, it is. It's the conditions are really good. I mean, we you know our, our you know I always say you got to work through uh, uh, the outfitters and the, the resorts yeah, who have the sure. ice roads and ice trails because you know with a literally Lake of the Woods, if you include the Canadian side, it's a million acres of water. There's 14,552 islands and there's over 65,000 miles of shoreline. And, you know, we do have moving water, you know, the, the Rainy River um, feeds Lake of the Woods. And then ultimately that water uh, is in the big basin. It's not moving so much because it's so big. But then once you get up towards the Northwest angle where the islands begin, now you start getting that water more focused and more neck downs and that water is moving through there. The water for people that don't know that water actually goes all the way up to Kenora, Ontario. And then there's a dam in Kenora and then it goes through uh, into the, you know, the Winnipeg river, Lake Winnipeg. And then it actually goes all the way up to uh, Hudson Bay up in Churchill where the polar bears are. So our watershed really pushes a long ways. But but to, again, um, ice conditions are, are really good right now. And it looks like we're going to have ice fishing through the end of March, which a lot of people are excited for. I say the end of March for fish houses being out overnight on the ice. You know, uh, a lot of the pike anglers love fishing the, the pike uh, well into April. Heck, the, the walleye anglers don't do it as much just because I think they're just so used to ending in March. But, yeah. you know, for some of the locals and people that know have their own equipment stuff, um, man, I'll tell you, getting out there in April, if the ice conditions are still good, I mean, for walleye fishing, that can be just incredible. Yeah, well, if I remember right, last year when we were up there fishing the open water for the tournament, there were some guys doing some ice fishing in different places. There, there were, absolutely there were, yep. And uh, again, it's it's one of those things where, you know, uh, I've, I've known people that have actually, some years when the ice really goes out late, I know some people that have actually iced fish on the opening of fishing. Now that is not real common, obviously, yeah. but but in May, you know. So, but this year, well, I don't think will be that year. This year seems to be pretty normal, but you'll still be able to get out the ice fishing, I think, in April. And well, I tell you, those pike already, you know, they're, those pike are going pretty darn good right now already, and uh, it should only get better. Well, that's something that I would like to do up there one of these years, Joe. Is we need to go up and film at a, a pike show. You know, I would like to see a video of you racing Danny to a flag, and uh, <laughs> I just want to see if you still got those wheels, Brett, like you used oh, to yeah. have, or. If Danny's kind of can, can can catch you on some of those, he thinks he can beat me. Have you ever done it? He probably can. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, no, I don't think we ever had the race. I don't know. One, one thing about it is, you know, as you get older, you get a little wiser. Yeah, maybe well, you don't see anything, and you you put some cleats on, and uh, you know, well, you, I, maybe I, put uh, the the better baits closer to you, and you know, the flags and stuff. I, and I'm, I'm saying. And I'm bigger and have no problem taking a guy out on my way to the Kicking flag. Kicking his ankle out. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny that you say that because we, we filmed with uh, with Don Walrath um, for a Prairie Sportsman episode a couple of years ago. And we were having a little friendly competition about who's going to catch more trout. And she set some flags out. Well, 
All of a sudden, she's like, oh, I'm just going to go stretch my legs for a minute. We're in portables. And she hops out, hops outside the house. And I look out the window. I see her take off running through the snow. <laughs> and she pulls up a, you know, a rainbow on the flag. And I was like, that doesn't count. So then we had a big d- disagreement over uh, whether or not flagged fish count in the contest or not. But she was so sneaky about it, too. Just like, do-do-do, snuck out of the house and took off running. But, stretch my legs, i.e. flags up. Flags up, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah, no, that would be fun to do that up there, Joe. Uh, catch some of those big fish because, man, I've seen some big pike come out of the ice up there this year already. Oh, there's, there's just some huge sleds. You know, it's funny because um, I was talking to somebody who um, fishes Bostic Bay area a lot, and they said normally that ice, there's enough ice in Bostic Bay that there just isn't much water under there, and there's not a lot of pike activity late in the season, like, like, um, for February and, and, and that sort of thing. But this year, you know, there, there was more water under the ice and those pike were in that, in that bay, you know, uh, so there, the, the notorious March spots for pike, um, were actually kicking some pretty nice fish out all winter long. So I, I tell that to people that are really avid pike anglers, you don't have to wait till March to ice fish pike on Lake of the Woods. I mean, you can be getting out there and those pike are eating all winter long. I mean, they love that cold water, obviously. And, uh, there, there's some great opportunities um, all, all winter long. And, you know, the other thing, too, is, you know, you're fishing those shallow water pike spots. There's so much water to fish. I mean, it's not like you're fishing structures. So it's really picking an area out or a depth out and going out there and spreading out some flags, you know. And it's not like you're, everybody's concentrated in one area. You don't have to be. And there's a few guys uh, offering guided pike fishing up there? There are, yeah. So some of the, some people offer guided pike fishing, but really a lot of the resorts are – are real dialed in. They got some of their guides at the resorts or some of the outfitters that uh, really know understand pike well. And they're like, yeah, no, I got, I'm mainly fishing walleyes right now, but if you want to come fish pike, you know, we could get you a house uh, you know, and some real good pike spots and you could just sit in the house and watch flags and play cards and, and whatever, you know what I mean? But that it's kind of nice that way. Cause if you don't want to bring up all your own equipment, don't know where to go or how to yeah. do it, they can really help you with that stuff. A lot of them provide tip ups. Otherwise, bring your own tip ups. You just got to communicate with each resort and outfitter before you come up to to find out exactly what you need and what they provide. You know, Joe. Just anecdotally, we've had a lot of conversations about that here. Just our our group of friends down here, and the cost of hauling like an ice castle. It's about a six hour drive for us of hauling up our own stuff and the wear and tear on all the gear, the amount of fuel you're burning, pulling something up like that. It, it, you're actually at, at times you could actually be saving some money by going through a guide up there and gaining that local knowledge at the same time. Exactly. It kind of depends upon, you know, how, how many days you fish throughout the year. And, and yeah. I think every time is different, right? But no, you're exactly right. It's the same thing with open water fishing. When we come to the open water season, you know, I was just at the Sioux Falls uh, sports show here this last week and talked to a lot of people. And, you know, some of the people like, yeah, I could pull my boat up there. Maybe I will someday. But I think the first time I come, I mean, I put a pencil to it. You can jump on a charter very reasonably. Rods, reels, tackle, bait, everything's provided for you. I mean, I'm going to jump on a charter. It's pretty reasonable and just get the lay of the land. Then what I'll do is I'll decide down the road if I want to bring my, my own boat up at the next time or if I want to yeah. continue going on a charter because it's just so easy. It's the same concept, right? Well, Joe, if people want to get a trip planned through uh, through a resort like that or maybe do some late season ice fishing, what should they do? You know what? All of our outfitters, all of our resorts, all the information you need about either ice fishing or open water fishing is on our website. And that is Lake of the Woods MN. Hear more at SportingJournalRadio.com or wherever you get podcasts. Come ice fish the famous waters of Minnesota's Lake of the Woods, the walleye capital of the world. Experience full-service resorts featuring heated fish houses, ice transportation, meal plans, and sleeper house options. From the northwest angle to the south shore, Rainy River, and Baudette, the Midwest's number one ice fishing destination. Walleye, sauger, perch, and northern pike. Minnesota's Lake of the Woods, best fishing anywhere. For more information, log on to lakeofthewoodsmn.com.